We only have a few days left. Let's crack down on how much time we got to spend on things. Let's talk about that. Hey class, welcome back. Mr. G here, your online art professor giving you guys another classroom management tutorial. This one is really just kind of wrapping up the school year. I came up with three things that really kind of hone in on how do we survive those last couple weeks and make it through. So let's start off with number one. Number one, cover what you want to cover flat out. And I, because there was somebody that w that posted something this past week and I saw it and I was like, I need to make a video just for this reason, which is they, this person loves clay. They love teaching clay. They love teaching clay to their class. They are a potter themselves. I myself am a potter. Got my schmock on. Uh, I just got done making a dozen clay donuts, which is an upcoming video. Another clay donut. I've washed my hands like 17 times in the last 20 minutes, so I just didn't want to do it again. They put they put on there that their students were just acting off the chain this year, that the they hold off on doing a clay project to the end. They want to do the clay project, but the kids are just so nuts. They don't know if they should do the clay project. Don't. Don't. Okay, that is that is your mental health that you are taking into account. If you don't need to do that project, don't do that project. Does it mean that the kids don't get to experience clay? Yes. But is it at the expense of the greater good of you maintaining your sanity, the kids being able to handle the, the materials responsibly? Are they going to get out of the project, the assignment that you want them to get out of? Are they actually going to get out of that? Are they going to get that knowledge out of there? If they're not, and it's because they're they're messing around and they're and they're becoming and there's too much chaos in the room. The learning project isn't going to happen at all, and they're just going to sit there and mess around with materials that go to waste. And then you just wasted a couple days of instruction that you could have devoted to something else. That something else that the kids could enjoy. Now, there's a myriad of things that the kids could enjoy, which I'm getting into the next topic right now, which is number two. When you're planning a project during this time of the year, you need to focus on no more than three steps. No more than three steps. Reason being is because the kids are burnt out. Uh, most of us have standardized testing right now, and the kids are doing some sort of a, a, a state testing assessment, and that kills most of instructional time. I know that schools that I've been in in the past, the entire school goes in a lockdown mode when it's testing time, and if this entire hall is not finished with testing. The whole school doesn't move. Nobody transitions to another class. That's just how some people do it. And I get it. I understand why they do it. Do I agree with it? No. Do I think that there's a better method? Yes. Do I think that standardized testing is bad? Yes. And I have a whole methodology and reason behind that. I'm just not going into it today. You have all of these things kind of stacked against you. So come up with projects that only require three steps. So the kids can just feel small successes very quickly. And a lot of those things, like if you have like a four step refinement where you're going in and making that project a little better, you're really honing in on what you wanted to learn and you're just kind of fine tuning at that point. That's fine. But, th but three steps, start to finish to making the project is what I really gear towards. What kind of projects do I do during that time? I have, I do do clay a lot and I've done fortune cookies during that time frame where we kind of make a, an assembly line and it's like roll out clay, make a circle, fold the pieces, one, two, three steps, and then go buy and refine it. If you want to add little details to the outside of your fortune cookie, or if beforehand you want to mark your message or whatever into the into the disc and then as you're folding it out make sure the lines are still there that's an idea doing doing still life uh drawings you could do, totally do that you can take the kids outside do a nature walk and they have to draw things out that they see out in nature uh, i've done tiki projects which i think is actually quite good this one you you really need to make sure that you're aware of every student and their allergies uh what, what i did in the past i need to probably make a video on this just because i thought it was a lot of fun um i had a machete that i <laughs> Just starting off with with the the hard hitting one. I had talked to my principal, my SRO, and my kids all knew what we were about to do. So I had my machete on my hip, and we went out to the backwoods. And I'm collecting a lot of greenery from back there. I would they would kind of point out what leaves they wanted, and I would hack them. And then I'd have like two or three people who would carry out baskets, and we'd put all the stuff in there. What we did was we collected all this greenery, and then took copy paper that we were using because we're poor. We didn't have any good stuff. And then I would take them back into the room on the copy paper. They would draw out tiki face 
faces and then we would put glue on it and then take the leaves that we found outside and glue them to the and it was really cut and dry uh sixth seventh grade all loved it eighth grade we were doing something else at the time i was probably doing pop art with them because we did a whole like warhol the reason why all that kind of stuff worked those three steps worked is because sixth grade seventh grade fifth grade they had to be put through the projects put through their paces putting them through those steps then when they got to eighth grade and they knew like oh this is mr g's class this is how we act in mr g's class you don't act out because if you act out we all lose and and that was built in over years of time. Keep that in mind. This is, if you're new, if you're, if you've only been out of school for a couple years, if you've been out of school for a long time, but there was things that happened over the, those course of those years where there's been a lot of transition, a lot of turnover. You have to rebuild your program. And knowing that, that that's one of those things that changes over time, take that into account. Let's go on to number three. Step number three, we all have to work with a modified playlist. And by the playlist is the projects that we do. Sometimes we have a project that we, we, we've done for years and years and years, and it's, it's a gold standard project, and that's what we want to do, but you run out of time. Modify that checklist. Modify those projects that are on that list. If you, if you don't have time, or things go sideways, or there's testing, or something happens to the script, something goes wrong, modify it. Okay, don't put yourself up to this pedestal of like, I'm going to achieve X, Y, and Z, and it's gonna happen. Cause it might not, and know that. Know that that's what you need to need to keep in mind. And you're a lot better off, the kids are a lot better off because then it's not pressure on them. And they understand that they didn't get to do X, Y, and Z, and it's not because of something that they did, that it was outside circumstances. And they process that a lot easier, especially when you're, when you're upfront and clear with them, like this is what went wrong, and I tell my students, I'll, I'll, I'll do a project that I came up with in my head and I will design it as I'm teaching it. And even, and, and there's been projects that, that completely fell apart on step two that the students were like, Mr. G, there's something wrong with this project. And I'm like, I know, I can't figure out what to do right here. And, and, I, and I'm telling them, and I'm clear as day with them, I don't cut any corners. I tell them exactly what I'm thinking and I tell them why this is not working. And you know what? They got my back keep with me. They stay up to date with everything that I want to do. Why? Because I'm authentic and I cut and dry, make everything as simplified as possible. Just the way that I teach, just the way I try and do these things. I want to get you guys as much information as possible again and tell you why I do things. It makes us all easier together. We all understand what, what's, on, what's in front of us. Transparency. It's a great thing. So with that, let's go ahead and wrap up for today's class. I, I, just before I go on another tangent, mainly, that's really it. Stay tuned. I'm making these uh, these ceramic donuts. I think it's going to be a cool project. I uh, I gave myself an hour to do all of these pieces. So stay tuned for that. It's coming out in the ceramic series I'm doing over the summer. So closing out class like we always do. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share on all the various platforms. Get the message out there to as many teachers, friends, students as we possibly can. Educate the masses. That's my goal. If you guys had a question, comment, or concern during today's class, raise your hands in the comments below. Happy to answer those questions from my classmates. As always, I will see you guys in the next class. Until then... Later, guys.